Hello again and uh, welcome to the corner studio here in my garage and uh, although this is folk art and camera I want you art subscribers to my channel to try to be patient with me because I've got some canvases back there that I started some of you may have seen the uh, videos where I laid in the backgrounds on those I plan to get back to them and finish them just not today so uh, bear with me please. For those of you who tune into the camera side of this channel, you're in luck because I'm talking about camera gear today because yesterday I went on a shopping excursion down to Kenmore Camera and I picked up some interesting gear. Let's dive right into it. Uh, first things first, I'm going to talk about the monopod that I bought first and then I need to double back and talk about some of these old monopods so we can compare features. I'll talk about this first and if you tuned in because the title said Winston 2.0 by Three-Legged Thing, um, you can see what I have to say about that and then bail before I get started on the other stuff. This is the end panel on that and if the camera lens focused uh, you'll see that I paid $500 for this tripod plus sales tax. And speaking of lens focusing, you guys can let me know because you're the ones watching the videos. I'm editing them online, but I think I'm using uh, my 14 to 30 uh, f4 lens, and I think it is grabbing focus a little better here in the studio than my 24 to 120. And of course, I got my trusty uh, Nikon Z6 II uh, filming this segment. Um, back to the tripod. First off, the tripod, uh, I've said, I've kind of preliminarily set it up and when it is shipped, it comes to you in the box and all of the legs are turned this way and that's so that it will fit in the box here and it also fits in the bag that way. They give you this nifty uh, nylon sack here and it's actually a pretty decent quality zippered bag and I said it was nylon, that's what I'm guessing it is. It could be some other kind of scientific material. But uh, it's got a pouch on the outside. You gotta turn the legs back the other direction for it to fit inside the pouch and be completely contained. As it is now, it would stick out, you know, about that much. And you could, uh, let me get the zipper started here after I just praised, there we go. Um, you could leave it with about that much sticking out if you wanted to, but it will fit in there if you fold the legs back the opposite way. Um, moving right along, you get the bag, you get a strap for the bag. This is the sack that uh, the airhead ball head is put in when um, it's new. And I kind of like that little sack. Uh, the ball head that comes with this, and I bought the kit, not the tripod by itself. I'll make it clear, you can just buy the tripod with no ball head, but I bought the kit. It comes with this ball head, and I'm telling you, this is a quality item. I have two of these on my monopods right now, and I just love this thing. Uh, it's It's got that feel of high precision machined um, just high quality steel and uh, I really 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 like this ball head and I'm going to put this in the spare gear bag but it is probably pretty quickly going to find a place in the studio getting used or out in the field when I'm when I'm out trying to uh, shoot wildlife so uh, I got an extra ball head out of the deal and the tripod now, the tripod, uh, why do I need so many tripods? Uh, I'll talk about that later in the video. The main thing uh, to know now is that this was the wife's primary tripod, this Manfredo 190. And because of some of its features, I needed it here in the studio. So she said, all right, you take that, I'm getting a new tripod. And she actually sent me down to shop for the new tripod and she only had Really a couple of uh, concerns. Well, first off, I'm gonna say weight is always a concern. This tripod weighs a little over four pounds, about four and a half pounds, I think the spec sheet said. So weight is always a factor. Four pounds, four and a half pounds is not bad for lugging out in the field. 
Uh, the two things, however, that she sent me to look for tripods, and I had an absolutely open mind, I promise you, shopping for tripods. I've bought Manfrotto, we've bought other three-legged thing items, and you know, I like that brand. I didn't go down looking for particularly a Manfrotto or a three-legged thing or anything else. I had an open mind about looking at tripods, and I looked at a lot of them, and this is the one I settled on. Now, she sent me down there, and she had two things that she wanted in her tripod. One of them was legs that had some length to them, not multiple sections. So what happens is, this is kind of a longer section, and if you were looking for something tiny to, to like shove inside of a backpack that's really portable, this may not be it because you got a nice long leg section here and you can see how easily they unfurl. The second thing that she asked for was, um, and you can see on this tripod, it has kind of a lever snap out that secures the legs and what she wanted was this knob style and we have this in the three-legged thing Allen monopod and we just really both of us like the ergonomics of that so they're a real plus and we, we're both just really liking that feature and I think this tripod here based on its features is going to become a really valuable part of our kit. Now, how do you get this part out? Well, um, that just slides out here and you tighten that center pole and that's basically it. The, um, the, the legs lock in with this uh, bar here and what you do is you figure the angle that you want to use and you push that tab down that bar and it locks them in. And uh, there we go. So it's a quality build. I like the feel of it. it. It passes those wickets of when you put it in your hand and you say, wow, that's nice, versus wow, that's cheap, or wow, I don't want to have that in my house, or whatever. Uh, there's that gag factor when I pick up something and it's like, oh, I don't even like that, put it back. Uh, Three-legged thing, I'm really very happy with it, and um, it has kind of a secret feature that uh, one of the guys was showing me down at Kenmore Camera, and that's this, that these legs actually, um, you can take these legs off, and this would actually make a monopod. You could, woo, you could actually put one of the, you know, this ball head right on top of one of the legs, and You've got yourself a monopod for the field, so uh, that's a feature. You know, if, um, if I'd known about that from Three-Legged Thing, uh, I might not have bought the two previous monopods because uh, this is just the cat's meow here. All right, uh, so I think I'm pretty much through talking about just the Three-Legged Thing, and if you're bored easily and you only tuned into this video, um, pace is going to get slower here as I talk about some of the features that I was looking for and how some of these other uh, tripods compare. The first thing I'm going to do um, is uh, I bought this, um, this gimbal head to actually give the wife to use with her kit. So the gimbal, basically I have preset that screw on the other side of it, this part unscrews here, and there's a rubber bumper in there that you can um, kind of set. And I've taken a guess what, how much threading I think this screw needs in order to seat down into where the gimbal is. So I'm going to try installing this thing, and it should be just about this easy. There we go. And you got to actually tighten that in order to get down to the last. All right, now, um, how this thing works, and I had a camera on here in my other video. If you look for the uh, video that I did on the Wimberly uh, gimbal head, 
that's already posted. You can see what that's about. But right here, the, um, the camera installs just about this easy. And of course, if you were using this with the lens, a long lens, I've got the camera installed in there now. If you were using it with a long lens, you'd put the lens on, on the bracket here. Uh, by turning this, you can move the camera this way. And by loosening this, you turn the camera this way. So that's what your gimbal does, and that's the range of motion that it gives you. And um, you can, of course, adjust that out. Then it just kind of fell out accidentally, but you can adjust that. So what I'm going to do, this is the, uh, you know, the new, the new find here, and um, I'm, I want to talk, I want to double back and talk about some of these older tripods. So what I'm going to do is uh, sit this guy off over to the side here and move this camera out of the way. And I want to just go through a couple of things, you know, one at a time. First off, this is the Manfrotto Element tripod, and I'll hold it up and let you get a better. I guess I could have. Unf you, you see how having extra sections, uh, they they do take a little longer to deal with and to adjust, and. Okay, we've gotten that one where it won't be flopping around. And that. So this is the Manfrotto Elements um, M2, I guess. And I bought these things a couple of years ago, maybe somewhere between two and three years ago. And at the time I bought them, I just wanted a lightweight tripod that I could um, just grab and carry with me out in the field and that was enough quality behind it to use around the studio and I really can't say that I have, I mean it's a decent ball head, it's a decent setup. The very bottom, the very bottom section on the legs, uh, I kind of got my questions about the strength of it. I have slightly bent one of the uh, sections on. I have two of these. I have slightly bent one of these sections, and I don't know if that's just because it's a little too on the lightweight or side, or if I was maybe abusing it, putting too much weight on the top. I couldn't honestly tell you, but one of the um, legs on the two tripods that I have that are identical has bent slightly. And I guess it's just under the pressure of being used. First off, I think this tripod is still being sold. And you can look it up. Uh, maybe you can get a deal on it or something. But it's still in about the $120 to $130 range. And when I bought mine, I don't know why. It was on sale. And uh, I actually was in a place that I go sometimes, and not my regular camera store, Kenmore, but another place. They had these tripods, and I bought one of them. I got up to the register, and it rang up really cheap. It rang up at like $65, and I asked the clerk, I'm like, are you sure that's the right price on this? Because the, the price on the sticker says something else, and I think it, it had at the time either 120 five or hundred thirty dollars something like that so the clerk looked at it and says yes uh, it says on the register sale fifty percent or whatever so I went I went I had been prepared to buy uh, one of them and spend that you know particular amount of money and I just decided to grab two of them and I ended up buying two of these things and I have used and used these I have no complaints about them um, are they worth $120 or $130? In my opinion, probably yes, they still are. I have no complaints about them. Were they worth two for one, basically? You betcha. And I, I still use these in the studio. And what's going to eventually happen, I used to carry one of these in the vehicle behind the seat uh, to have a tripod on hand all the time. I've kind of stopped doing that. Uh, I. I've gotten in the habit now of monopods being my 
sort of portable and quick thing. So I don't really take up space in my vehicle by storing a tripod that I may or may not use. And uh, I have actually, mostly I use these around the studio now, although this particular one, um, the camera that's filming this right now, the Nikon Z6 II, is actually sitting on the other one that's identical to this. But this one was on my balcony. I was using it for birding. And it's gotten to the point where, like, I don't really worry if it's out in the rain or whatever, because other tripods have come into the household. And we've kind of said about these in particular, it's OK to put them in a little bit of a risk. It's OK to abuse them with the weather or whatever. It just doesn't matter. The price we paid for them, I'm content if something happens to them. Um, that said, they're a great little set of legs, and I guess the end final use of them will probably be for lighting around the studio when they finally get where maybe they're not as serviceable or trustworthy for cameras. But that could be a while yet. Uh, the other thing is, if I ever needed to scavenge kind of just a reliable ball head to use for something else, uh, I would, without hesitation, grab one of these and uh, take it off the tripod. And it, it's really pretty good ball head. Um, I've before introduced this one. Um, this is a little bit of a gimbal itself. And it's got a pair of binoculars on it right now. This has become its, uh, this used to be one of my photography tripods. But this thing, uh, I don't know what the weight would support on it. but. You might could put an engine block on top of here, and uh, it, it, it may would hold up. It's sturdy. Uh, this is a Manfrotto back when they were partnered somehow with Bogan. It's got a sticker on it that says Manfrotto Bogan. Um, the, the top part here, the head, is the 3030 model. And uh, I don't even know if this thing's made anymore. I kind of doubt it. It swivels this way. It will swivel this way. So you got this going for you, you got this going for you, and you can also turn it here. And all of those will lock down. Now, it has right now turned into a tripod for binoculars, and I've got a pair of Nikon Monarch on here. This is a 16 power, uh, let me make sure of that. Yeah, 16 power um, binoculars, and I can hold 10s still just with my hands, but 16s, if you don't have a brace, it's kind of hard to look at stuff through them. So these ended up on a tripod. And I'm not saying this is the permanent solution for, um, for this rig, but that's where we have it right now. If I needed this tripod for something else, um, a higher priority use, I would pull this tripod and do something else with the binoculars because this is still a really, really nice tripod and I don't ever really plan to part with it. Uh, last but not least, uh, this is the other tripod that's kind of in our stable of being actively used right now. And I like this tripod around the studio and it has a particular um, function here that makes it really um, around the studio. See this part here, uh, the center pole, um, by pushing this down, you know, this happens when you're in, in front of the camera. OK. There we go. That will flop over, and you can put your camera up here and you can literally point this thing right down at, at, at a table surface. And I have been setting up this tripod and using it when I do my ASMR uh, art videos because it will point at the table. And this is a handy feature to have. And it's usually not so stubborn to get it out of there. It's only when you turn the camera on and you try to do something that you get anything that can go wrong that will go wrong. Um, so this is the stable of tripods we have right now, and they all kind of seem to have slightly different personalities, and um, as time goes along, we'll see what new comes out, 
what might get pushed out of the stable, um, what might need to be added to it. Uh, it's all kind of up in the air. As our gear evolves and we figure out uh, ideal uh, equipment, um, there you have it. I guess all of it, uh, you know, any of them could lose their place if something really way better comes along. But um, so far, I feel like we have a good mix. And I guess I'm going to leave it here. And I hope, uh, I really do hope that you just, you just bailed when I stopped talking about the Winston uh, 2.0 because I know the rest of it got rambly and it's mostly kind of a subjective opinionated thing, but there it is. And um, I wouldn't hesitate to have any of these again, but uh, if I had to you know, buy them over again, I'd kind of think about it based on what else is new out there. But I'm satisfied owning them, and I'm going to tell you uh, thanks, thanks so much for uh, tuning in to the videos, and you're invited to um, subscribe to this channel and, and be a, a member of our little group here, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in another one.